Welcome back. To understand what's going on in the Democratic primary, you have to sample the mood on the ground. And from my three days in Iowa, it's clear to me that the Bernie Sanders phenomenon is very real, with the Vermont Independent Senator attracting huge crowds. Senator Sanders joins me now from Iowa. Senator, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you. I have to say, I was both in Clear Lake, watched you there, watched you in the soapbox yesterday where you had so many people uh, the fair stop. Forget Trump, forget Hillary Clinton. I think you might have had the biggest crowd yesterday. Why do you think you're resonating at this point, and how do you take this from being a, a movement that seems big in August, and how do you keep it from fading five months from now? Well, Chuck, I think we are resonating all over this country and here in Iowa because we're talking about issues that are life and death issues to the American people. And that is the collapse of the American middle class, the massive and grotesque level of income and wealth inequality in this country, the fact that we are the only major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people, the fact that millions of working class families are now finding it very, very difficult to send their kids to college, and the basic fact that people are working longer hours for lower wages, and meanwhile, almost all of the new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. And then you add to that a campaign finance system as a result of Citizens United that allows billionaire families like the Koch brothers and others right. to literally buy politicians and corrupt the American political process. You know, Senator... Add all of that together, yeah. and the American people are saying, enough is enough. You know, the last time I had you on, uh, and I asked you uh, about what do you think of the comparisons between the phenomenon of, of what's going happening with you and, and whether there were similarities with Trump, you were dismissive of it. But can I tell you, I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said both positive things about you and Trump at the same time, using things like the campaign money uh, example and the outsider. W what do you think you have in common with the Trump voter? Forget Trump, but the Trump well, voter. Uh, well, yeah, but here's the difference. You know, I am not a billionaire. My family doesn't have a whole lot of money. We are raising our campaign contributions from 350,000 people who are contributing, Chuck, on average, $31.20 apiece. That's our response, to go out to working class people, to go out to the middle class people and gain support. I think that's a little bit different approach than Donald Trump's. BuzzFeed has an article out this morning. Headline is this, Sanders campaign reaches out to Black Lives Matter activists. Quote, I apologize, it took our campaign so long. Tell me more about it. Well that, w well, that was sent out by a staffer, not by me. Look, we are reaching out to all kinds of groups. Absolutely. I met with folks at Black Lives Matter. We're reaching out to Latino groups. We're reaching out to the unions. We're fighting to expand Social Security. And we're reaching out to senior groups. We're reaching out to health care groups because we believe that everybody in America is entitled to health care. We're reaching out to everybody. But on this issue of Black Lives Matter, let me be very clear. The issue that they are raising is a very, very important issue. And there is no candidate for president who will be stronger in fighting against institutional racism and, by the way, reforming a broken criminal justice system. Chuck, we have more people in jail in the United States of America than any other country on earth. And we need real changes. We need to do away with a militarization of local police departments. We need to do away with minimum sentencing. We need education and jobs for our young people rather than jails and incarceration. I understand that, but uh, you said a staffer put it out, but uh, an you felt an apology was necessary? No, I, I don't. I think we're going to be working with all groups. This was sent out without my knowledge. Fair enough. Uh, let me ask you something that Martin O'Malley said. Clearly was a reference to you earlier this week. I don't think it's a problem for the Democratic Party, but it might be a problem long term for Senator Sanders. I am a lifelong Democrat, and I believe very deeply in the principles of our party. That's why I choose to be a Democrat, not just in presidential years, but every year of my life. This reference that you have not become a registered member of the Democratic Party. What do you say in response? Well, legally, in the state of Vermont, you can't, you know, legally become a member. You vote in the Democratic primary. I have done that. I've supported and helped Democratic candidates. Uh, for a governor in my state. Uh, I have been a member of the Democratic Caucus uh, for 25 years in the House and the Senate. I'm now the ranking member of the Budget Committee. But it is true. I am the longest serving independent in the history of the United States Congress. And let me tell you that, this. I think it is an advantage 
Because when I speak to 28,000 people in Portland, Oregon, or 27,000 people in Los Angeles, the vast majority of those people, they're not quote unquote registered Democrats. They are ordinary people who are sick and tired of politics as usual. And by the way, one of the real advantages, I think, of me winning the Democratic primary is that we can get a lot of young people, a lot of working people involved in the political process, getting them out to vote in a way that establishment politicians can't. Democrats are losing because voter turnout is abysmal. I think we can change that. Uh, I, very quickly, during your one of your largest applause lines is when you said, when you become president, you're going to focus on on uh, creating a health care system that's essentially Medicare for all. Does that mean you're going to scrap yeah. the Affordable Care Act and then try to implement Medicare for all if you're president? Well, what it, Chuck, what it means is we are, as you know, the only major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people. I live 100 miles away from Canada. They do it. Uh, we spend almost twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of any other country. So what we want to do is expand on Medicare. Medicare is a popular, good system. It covers people who are old. I want to see Medicare cover everybody. A Medicare for all single payer program is the way, in my view, that you provide universal, yep. quality, cost-effective health care, and we join the rest of the industrialized world. All right, last question. Joe Biden, you welcome him into the race. Do you think he should run? I have known Joe for many, many years, and everybody who knows Joe likes him and respects him. The decision as to whether or not he runs is his. If he does run, I promise him an issue-oriented campaign. We'll debating the major issues facing the American people. Help your campaign or hurt? We'll, we'll let the political pundits determine that. All right, Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, I look forward to a longer extended uh, issue-oriented interview at some point where we can do uh, the gambit of issues, including some foreign policy in the near future, sir. Love, love to do it.